Hans Koigman spent 20 years at SpaceX, making Dragon spacecraft safe enough to carry humans to orbit. His work protected over 60 astronauts who flew on Dragon missions. But here's the shocking part. Hans himself never qualified to ride the spacecraft he helped perfect. When he finally crossed the Kármán line in 2025, four years after retiring from SpaceX, it wasn't aboard Dragon. It was on Blue Origin's New Shepard. Why would the man who made Dragon safe enough for astronauts choose a competitor's suborbital rocket instead? And what does this reveal about the real reason Blue Origin fell so far behind in the space race? The answer lies in something most people don't realize about Dragon missions. Flying to orbit isn't just physically harder. It requires astronaut-level qualifications that even Hans, with two decades at SpaceX, couldn't meet. Dragon missions demand extensive training, perfect health metrics, and stamina for multi-day flights. New Shepard, you just need to sit in a chair for ten minutes and experience four minutes of weightlessness. It's the difference between climbing Everest and taking a helicopter ride to see it. But this convenience reveals something darker about Blue Origin's strategy. And it starts with a decision made nearly two decades ago, one that would cost the company six critical years. Blue Origin never intended New Shepard to be a tourist attraction. The BE-3PM engine powering that capsule was originally designed for something far more ambitious an orbital rocket. The early blueprints showed five BE-3PM engines on the first stage, plus the BE-3U variant on the upper stage. Back in the early 2000s, Blue Origin was even part of NASA's commercial crew development program alongside SpaceX. So why build a suborbital rocket at all? The thinking seemed logical. Use New Shepard as a training platform. Learn to land boosters safely, test hydrogen propulsion systems, develop life support for future orbital missions. The BE-3 engine itself produces 490 kilonewtons of thrust, actually more powerful than SpaceX's early Merlin engines. It wasn't a toy, it was supposed to be a stepping stone. But here's where the plan collapsed. In 2015, Blue Origin successfully landed New Shepard's booster, a genuine achievement. The company could have declared victory, shifted engineers to New Glenn, and started the real race to orbit. Instead, they made a fateful choice. Make New Shepard human-rated before moving forward. That single decision created what industry insiders now call a black hole of time and attention. From 2015 to 2021, six full years... Blue Origin focused on safety certification for a rocket that only goes up and down. Six years to carry rich tourists on ten-minute joyrides while SpaceX was launching satellites, resupplying the International Space Station and preparing to land humans on the moon. Why did it take so long? Because human rating a spacecraft means redesigning everything for absolute safety. Every valve, every seal, every software line gets scrutinized. You can't move fast when one mistake could kill passengers. And here's the brutal irony. Suborbital flight teaches you almost nothing about reaching orbit. Think about what New Shepard actually tests. A straight vertical launch, a brief engine burn, a few minutes of coasting, then re-entry and landing. No high-speed trajectory management, no stage separation under extreme forces, no multiple engine restarts in vacuum, no orbital velocity of 17,500 miles per hour. It's like SpaceX engineers warned from the beginning. You can't train for a marathon by running sprints. When Blue Origin finally turned to New Glenn, they had to design almost everything from scratch anyway. New engines, new boosters new fuel systems, new flight computers. The six years spent perfecting New Shepard hadn't shortened the path to orbit. They'd merely delayed the start of the real work. Compare that to SpaceX's approach. Falcon 1 launched in 2006, aiming directly for orbit. 
The first three attempts exploded, but the fourth succeeded in 2008, unlocking NASA contracts that kept the company alive. Every failure taught SpaceX engineers exactly what didn't work at orbital speeds and pressures. By 2010, Falcon 9 was flying. By 2018, the Block 5 variant was ready. And just two years later, in 2020, it carried astronauts to orbit on Crew Dragon. Two years to human rate an orbital rocket versus six years to human rate a suborbital one. That timeline difference reveals everything about Blue Origin's fundamental problem. They adopted what's called a hardware-poor development model, the same approach that plagued NASA's space shuttle program. In a hardware-poor model, you design everything perfectly on paper. Build one expensive prototype, test it cautiously, and pray it works. Making changes after construction is nearly impossible because every component connects to dozens of others. You don't scrap and rebuild. You patch and pray. SpaceX runs hardware-rich development instead. Build multiple prototypes fast and cheap. Test them to destruction. Learn from spectacular failures. Rebuild with improvements in weeks, not years. Starship has gone through dozens of iterations. Some blew up on the pad. Others made it to space before exploding. Each failure cost millions but taught lessons worth billions. Blue Origin's careful approach seems responsible until you realize the cost. While they spent six years perfecting suborbital tourism, SpaceX completed over 200 Falcon 9 launches. New Glenn has flown exactly twice. In the startup world of commercial space, that's not caution, it's paralysis. And then there's the business reality nobody talks about. New Shepard tourism doesn't make money. Each flight costs millions in refurbishment, fuel, and staff. With roughly six passengers per trip, paying around $1 million each, the math barely breaks even, and that's before accounting for development costs. Since 2021, Blue Origin has likely lost hundreds of millions on the program, sustained purely by Jeff Bezos's personal fortune. The irony cuts deep. Blue Origin's stated mission is to lower the cost of space access so millions can live and work beyond Earth. Yet their only operational vehicle serves a handful of millionaires taking brief joyrides. SpaceX launches over 100 times per year, deploying satellites that provide internet to remote regions, carrying supplies to astronauts, and building the infrastructure for Mars missions. Which company is actually advancing humanity's future in space? Blue Origin could have positioned New Shepard as a cargo test platform instead. Skip human rating entirely. Fly experimental payloads weekly. Iterate engine designs rapidly. Learn lessons that actually transfer to orbital flight. Instead, they chased luxury tourism. Great for headlines, terrible for long-term growth. This narrow focus created a trap. The customer base stays small. The profits remain tiny. The technical lessons don't advance orbital capability. Meanwhile, SpaceX's orbital launches generate real revenue that funds Starship development, creating a self-sustaining cycle of improvement. But the deeper problem isn't New Shepard itself, it's Blue Origin's absorbed culture. By partnering with traditional aerospace contractors, the company inherited the same bureaucratic mindset that's plagued the industry for decades. The attitude of, we're the experts, it's harder than you think, it'll be done when it's done, keeps innovation crawling forward at a pace that would have seemed normal in 1970, but is unacceptable in 2025. And perhaps all of this traces back to a conversation that happened before any rockets flew. In 2004, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk met to discuss their space visions. According to Musk's later recollection, he warned Bezos about several technical approaches that SpaceX had already tested and abandoned as impractical. Musk said, I actually did my best to give good advice, which he largely ignored was one of those warnings about making the first vehicle human-rated. 
We don't know for certain. But consider the context. In 2004, Musk was an internet entrepreneur trying to build rockets with no aerospace experience. Bezos was already one of the world's richest men with resources to hire the best engineers. Why would Bezos listen to someone who hadn't successfully launched anything yet? The truth is, Bezos didn't have a clear roadmap for Blue Origin in those early years. He knew he wanted to be part of humanity's space future, but hadn't defined exactly how to get there. For years, Blue Origin operated more like a research laboratory than a rocket company. Experimenting, studying, waiting for the perfect moment. Musk had a mission from day one. Make humanity multiplanetary by reaching Mars. Every SpaceX decision traced back to that singular goal. And when Blue Origin finally started, building operational rockets, observers couldn't help noticing they often seemed to follow in SpaceX's footsteps, just several years behind. What began as two competing visions for humanity's future in space gradually transformed into something else entirely, a one-sided race where Blue Origin constantly plays catch-up while SpaceX defines what's possible. Those six years spent perfecting New Shepard weren't just wasted time. They were the years Blue Origin handed the future of orbital spaceflight to competitors who moved faster, failed harder, and learned quicker. So let's return to Hans Koigman floating weightless aboard New Shepard in 2025. The man who made Dragon safe for dozens of astronauts finally reached space, but not on the spacecraft he devoted 20 years to perfecting. That moment perfectly captures Blue Origin's deeper problem. New Shepard wasn't a mistake as a concept. As a research and development platform, it actually made technical sense. The rocket worked flawlessly as early as 2015. The BE-3 engine proved hydrogen propulsion could be reliable. The autonomous landing system succeeded consistently. On paper, Blue Origin had everything it needed to move forward. But execution is where visions live or die. Those six years from 2015 to 2021 weren't lost because of bad engineering. They disappeared into a culture that chose perfection over progress, caution over speed, and luxury tourism over advancing humanity's access to space. While Blue Origin carefully polished a suborbital vehicle, competitors raced ahead with orbital capabilities that actually matter. The lesson isn't that Blue Origin built the wrong rocket. It's that they built it the wrong way, slowly cautiously, with a bureaucratic mindset borrowed from traditional aerospace. In an industry where rapid iteration and learning from failure determine who leads, that approach doesn't just slow you down. It hands victory to those willing to fail faster and learn quicker. The space race isn't won by the company that builds the safest, suborbital tourist ride. It's won by those who reach orbit, deploy satellites, and build the infrastructure for humanity's future beyond Earth. What do you think? Could Blue Origin have caught SpaceX if they'd skipped human raiding New Shepard and gone straight for orbit? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If this breakdown changed how you see the space industry, hit that like button and subscribe to New Space Review for more analysis that cuts through the hype. Share this with anyone who still thinks Blue Origin and SpaceX are in the same league.